time. We kind of want to. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Average Joe Watch Reviews, where we do more than just reviews. If this is your first time on the channel, I want to thank you for stopping by. And if you could do me a huge favor, please click that like button because that is the most charitable way to help support the channel. So you click the thumbnail, so obviously you know why I am wearing my Luminox hat. And that's because I want to show you guys the Luminox, the only easy day was yesterday, blackout watch with the carbon core technology. Um, this is the long-term review because I've already done an unboxing, but I have yet to do a review. And since I've had this watch now for over a year now, um, I could actually give you a long-term review on this watch. So with no further ado, let's dive into the review. Oh yeah, let's just dive headfirst into this particular watch. And as you can see, it's not actually on its original strap. I've actually put it on this Straps Co Camo strap, and I've had it on there for quite a long time. And the reason why is because I just think it looks very unique. It's very comfortable. And that's not to say that the strap that it comes with isn't. Um, this strap, as you can see, has been used pretty pretty well, actually, and it's held up very nicely. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys the original strap, and I mean, it's got Luminox right there on the buckle. You've got the double tang, and you've got the double holes. I mean, this is really heavy-duty um, rubber. What you're looking at is a pretty large watch, and I don't typically... Uh, sport watch is this large, but for this one here because it's so light and it actually wears well on the wrist You're looking at a 44 millimeter watch and I'm not including any of the pushers or anything there That was just the case size But if we're looking at the protective element at the edge here to the crown You're looking at a really wide puppy here at 51 millimeters um, that's a really large watch when you look at the girth of the, enti the entire watch. Now, if we look at the lug to lug, our lug to lug uh, is also 51 millimeters. How ironic is that? So, ironically, our width is actually the same size as our lug to lug. Um, pretty rare um, to see that in a watch. So, let's just get up close and personal with this watch and you can see right here in the red zone which is our 0 to 20 minutes or 0 to 20 seconds um, you'll see on the inner dial here the words written the only easy day was yesterday now that's a really cool touch and this is actually made um, to be part of the uh, like the Navy SEALs collection, and you can actually see the symbol back here. Um, really nice case back. Uh, this is actually um, embossed very nicely, and it gives you a lot of information, including 200 meters of water resistance. This is a carbon, uh, carbon compound case mineral crystal. So, guys, I know right away you're cringing because you're like, mineral crystal, really? So there's an actual practical sense to a mineral crystal as it doesn't shatter like a sapphire crystal does. Now, in combat, which let's be honest, guys, and I'm not going to pretend to to not know that in combat, soldiers typically wear your Casio G-Shocks and Casio products. But from what I understand... Um, speaking to different um, different soldiers of the military, they tell me that the G-Shock Casio products are definitely what is worn the most. So um, be that as it may, the mineral crystal um, actually is more shatter resistant than it is the sapphire crystal. So um, that's, that's, from, that's what I understand from Luminox as to why they went with mineral crystal. Um, 
when it comes down to the bezel action, take a listen. We've got ourselves a true 60 click bezel and it's very, very tight. Like as you can see, it's very precise as well. I don't have an issue with 60 click bezels. I mean, let's be honest. Um, some of the most prestigious watches, Tudor for instance, utilizes a 60 click bezel. So why would we fry or roast um, Luminox for the, for the same when the bezel actually has good engagement and actually very, very little back play. Um, it's, it's actually not a bad bezel. So um, no issues here with that. Now at the 12 o'clock position, you do see that that is a tritium tube. Now that is actually encased in a sapphire crystal, believe it or not. All right, so sapphire mineral. Now you do see the Luminox logo um, that is actually applied at the 12 o'clock position and take a look at that dial. Look at the texturing of the dial. It's got a very rough looking um, texture and it looks very nice. And you can see the sub dials are actually set just below kind of like a little bit of a indention um, in the dial itself to give it at least a little bit of depth. At least the nine o'clock and three o'clock dials, the six o'clock one is actually more um, flat to the surface but you can see the dials themselves have a smooth texture to it and everything is done blackout style. You can even see the um, GMT time, 13 at the one o'clock position um, and so on around the clock here, doing it in a basically like a, I don't know, a square formation. Um, the stopwatch function is activated with the pusher and you can see that that activates it and you do have what appears to be a what would that be 24 hour 24 hour countdown so that would be your hours and this would be the minutes okay and then over here so let's just let's just stop this for a second and just take a look. So it is hacking. It's a hacking quartz. It is a Swiss made quartz, and you can see that your second hand is at the three o'clock position. Now I do like the contrasting red second hand. It does go very well with the contrasting numbering at, on the bezel and the contrast on the inner bezel of the only easy day was yesterday. Very, very nice. You stop the stopwatch at the one o'clock pusher and you reset it and it goes all the way around the board to 12 o'clock. Setting the time is clicking the crown out two times. Definitely prominent crown guards on this watch and setting it, as you can see, it's very simple. And the date change is, it happens right around 11.55. Pretty standard of a watch. Um, so definitely no issues there. Um, setting the date. Um, again, I like to set it at six o'clock to make sure that there is no issue with the date wheel. We click it out one position and you can see that you can even hear it click over. Very, very nice. Um, let's get some more measurements of this watch before uh, I put it on the wrist. So we'll zero this out and we have ourselves a 15 millimeter width all right and the lug width is actually uh, 24 millimeters now the side here it says 200 meters this is actually an extra shock absorber for the side so if it hits anything on the side it's protected you hit it on this side you got the crown protector um, so the watch is pretty well protected and even if you look at the side view, um, the way that the bezel is um, crafted here, you could see 
that these indices here are actually protrude up to help to protect the glass. So if I were to drop it, the, um, the bezel actually helps to protect it. So very, very um, innovative and good touch. One thing that Luminox is really known for, and that's these tritium tubes. And these tritium tubes are not cheap. My issue with these tritium tubes is that even though it says that they're gonna, you're gonna get 25 years, I've heard of these things dying in half the time. The problem is once they do die, if in fact you really wanna continue that luminescence, um, you're gonna have to get these replaced and that's not cheap and Luminox does not cover that. So tritium tubes do have themselves a, they have a half-life, but sometimes at the half-life even, they're so dim that you don't really see much. So that's a really, um, that's your difference between tritium tubes and your um, typical Luminova. As you can see, the lugs actually are kind of stubby and they do point downwards. And um, another thing I don't really like is the screw, using a screwdriver for the case. Um, I'm not usually a fan of that. I, I like the the, the uh, screw screw down case backs where you have to actually use a tool to, uh, to unscrew it. These, uh, I don't know, I, I just, I've never really had a lot of luck with these, even though this one looks like it would be pretty simple and straightforward. Um, there's always that chance of losing a screw, um, over tightening, stripping and whatnot, stripping the screw. So it's just, I don't know, for me, I would, I would rather see this, the screw down case back. So, but that's me. Um, you can see Luminox is signed on the crown. You see that there is a coin edge. You know, you don't have to unscrew these to utilize that. That was a little bit disappointing as well because I thought that this would actually help to, if you were to accidentally bump into it, that you wouldn't lose your, you know, lose the time uh, when you're timing something or even damage the pusher. So I thought that that would be there for protection, but in all actuality that they don't do anything. Let's take a look at it on the wrist. I actually am wearing the Seiko SNZ, the 50 Fathoms uh, homage, and I do have it on a proper sailcloth strap so that it does really have that Blancpain 50 Fathoms look, and it's a really cool watch. So I have a seven inch wrist, so this will give you guys an idea. I'll tell you what, I think because the lugs are, um, they're manufactured in the way that they are. They're stubby and they kind of protrude down that it actually is probably the perfect, like I couldn't go any bigger without this looking silly. So I think this one really, really stretches the limit for my wrist size, but I'll tell you what, I love it. And the fact is that this watch is extremely, extremely light. Um, let's get this on a scale so I can show you how much this watch weighs. All right, so the Luminox is gonna be weighing in at a extremely light 2.5 ounces. All right, now the watch I just took off, the Seiko SNZ, that's gonna weigh in at 3.5. So the, even though this is a bigger watch because of the carbon core technology, this is a lighter watch, and it does feel like it. I mean, it's it's actually a lot larger than the Seiko, yet it does weigh in less. So, you know, even though it's a larger watch, it's gonna feel comfortable on the wrist. So, that is the review of this particular watch. It has held up extremely nicely. Um, I've had absolutely zero issues with the watch, and um, I highly recommend it. So there you go, guys, the long-term review of the Luminox, the only easy day was yesterday watch. I'm curious to see what you guys thought of this particular piece, but also what do you guys think of Luminox um, in general? Do you like the brand? Um, what is it about the brand you like? What is it about the brand you don't like? And the reason why I ask is because I don't see a lot of YouTubers talking about Luminox. So I would love to hear it down below. Tell me what you think. And always remember that there's always time to be kind, 
especially in those comments. You guys can definitely critique and not like something, but you can still be kind about it. So I just please ask that you guys be kind in the comments and I would really appreciate that. So I'll see you guys next time on Average Joe Watch Reviews. God bless my friends. Yeah.